So, hey everyone. Um, my name is, is, is Zach Hoffman. Um, I'm, um, I, I'm presenting about um, the new flexible topologies feature in uh, Apache traffic control um, with Jeremy Mitchell and Rob Butts. Um, Jeremy is uh, going to present the traffic portal session. While he's getting that set up, um, I will talk about the flexible topologies features in um, traffic ops and traffic monitor and traffic router. And um, if, it, if, if you um, want to download the slides, there's a, a link here, or you can just follow along. Um, just a couple notes about me. Um, I am a software engineer at 3 Comcast. Um, I've been with the Comcast Viper CDN team since December of 2019. Um, and uh, I, I was a full stack developer supporting higher education before that. Um, I've only committed for 26 days, and um, if you ever want to play Tetris, I will take you up on that. And um, if you ever want to find me on GitHub or um, uh, Apache, anything, those are my usernames. Okay, so um, uh, uh, a topology. So Jeremy is going to um, to um, go into this a little more in detail. But okay, so you see the 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 red here. This is an edge, and then the the blue ones, the um, teal ones, the, these are our, our mids, right? So um, if um, we, we have a, um, a test environment in the project called CDN in a box, um, and this is the topology that is um, there. So um, notice there's two mids, so there's three tiers here. That's just one thing that um, you can do with, with topologies. And so as far as what the actual structure of that is when you're creating a topology, um, you, um, is, is so it's zero indexed. So um, when this says that the parent is one, that refers to mid zero one. When it says that the parent of mid zero one is two, then uh, that's at mid zero two. So pretty self-explanatory there. Notice that there, um, you, you're not going to get any ID or anything in, in the response. Um, the the name is um, is the primary key. Okay, so as far as what you can and cannot make for uh, a topology, um, you cannot use the same cache group twice in a topology um, at first off. So if you try to do that, it, it will say no. Um, if you, if uh, for some reason you, uh, you you want to make your CDN out of like um, all reverse proxies, um, which it, which isn't a bad idea. Rob Butts was talking about that. Um, you 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 can just make it um, all edges if you want, um, or if you just want um, the last two um, last two tiers to, to be edge cache groups, you can do that. So edge cache groups can parent at other edge cache groups. But what edge cache groups cannot do is parent mid cache groups, which are forward proxies. Um, and then uh, a mid cache group in a topology must have at least one child node, which is one way of saying, which is another way of saying that um, mid cache groups cannot have cannot be leaf nodes. Okay, and then this part. So um, well, let's see. Does does everyone know what I mean when I say a cycle that a topology is a cache group? or topology nodes, you can use those terms interchangeably. Um, it cannot form a cycle. So you, you see this like circle that, um, that, that that's a that's a cycle here. Okay. So 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 you've got this cycle. Um, and if you if if we were to allow that then it would just be like uh, in queuing updates in in a circle. It, it, it would never finish. Uh, so um, we, we don't let you do that. Um, and um, it, and actually, I can show what that what what that looks like. Um, okay. So so I've got this topology here. Um, okay. So. Um, so and, and it says um, no, you cannot have cycles. Um, it, it detects the cycles and it tells you um, which cache groups are involved. Um, so, 
Um, so, so that's part of the validation there. Um, uh, but another thing that we have in topologies, um, we have this concept of a static topology, if you were to combine all of the topologies. So um, for that, uh, you've got, um, so, so here we've got a first topology and here we've got the, the second topology, right? And um, so can, can anyone, um, can, can anyone in, in chat tell me which uh, cache groups um, have the cycle? Um, it, it, anyone. So j just like if we have E1, E2, M1, M2, and, and M3. All right. Five, four, three, two. Um, so, okay, the cycle is um, one, M2, and M3. And so I, I can show what um, that looks like. So um, in this case, um, I, I've already um, posted this at first a topology. So see on the on the left hand side, um, that is um, a representation of um, that first topology. But then on the right hand side, that's the second topology. So the first topology will post just fine. Um, but as soon as you try to post that second topology, um, that's where the cycle will come in. Um, it, and it says, um, no, there's this cycle in the super topology, static topology, um, and it and tells you uh, to the cache groups involved. So if, if you were to um, take either of those cache groups out, then the cycle would no longer exist. So um, there's, um, th that's what you got with um, cycles. Um, so next, um, let's talk about um, snapshots. When I say snapshot, I mean the traffic router config. Um, so, it, which is um, what traffic monitor gets and um, what traffic router looks for in order to know which servers are involved in which delivery service. Um, so we've got a new topology section. Um, uh, previously, the content service section did not um, say anything about server capabilities. Um, now it does. Um, uh, previously, um, it didn't say anything about re uh, required capabilities in the delivery service section. Now it does. Um, and um, using that information, um, you're able to um, you, you're you're able to um, I, I, everything there. You're able to calculate which servers um, are associated with which delivery services. And um, and th there's going to be an example coming up of that. So when I say server capabilities. Um, for example, let's say um, there's a RAM capability, meaning that uh, the servers with that cap capability have like a, a RAM disk. And let's say there's a, an HDD, a hard disk drive capability. Um, so any servers with that capability just have a, a hard disk drive, right? And our delivery service is called small files. Um, and let's say our delivery service um, called small files um, requires the RAM capability, okay? So here is my um, topology over here. So we've got these two edges right here. There's the Mountain Cache Group, the Colorado Cache Group, the New Mexico Cache Group, and um, and then let, let's put some servers in here. So we've got C1, C2, C3, NM1, M2, NM3, and the MT1, MT2, and MT3. And let's say that only some of those servers have that capability. Okay. So only C1, C2, NM2, MT1, and MT3 have uh, the RAM capability. So if you did that, then this is what um, the snapshot would look like. And I kind of um, I, 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 I kind of commented at all the, um, I, I'm only focusing on the, the sections that are relevant here. So first notice that um, it includes all of the servers, not just the ones with the RAM capability. Um, and that's because traffic router and traffic monitor are going to need to um, calculate which servers are involved here. And then, um, and then over here in our topology section, you see it says that the nodes are the Colorado cache group and the New Mexico cache group. Notice that it does not say anything about the mountain cache group. Um, we only need to tell traffic router about the edges. Um, and then up here in our delivery service, um, we require the RAM capability. Um, and all these servers, it says which capabilities the servers have. Um, and then also in the delivery services section, um, 
we, we have our mountain top uh, topology over here, which we've already described. Um, so you, so th this is an, a nice thing. You no longer have to um, talk about the structure of your delivery service when um, making it. That's all um, abstracted out to the topology now. Um, and and so yep, that that's uh, th that that's pretty much an overview of what you've got there. So as far as what traffic monitor does, um, there weren't very many changes. Um, previously, um, we, we had this concept of delivery service servers, which are servers that were assigned to a delivery service. Um, since that's something that Traffic Monitor calculates now, Traffic Monitor can still talk about delivery service servers, but that's something that it calculates um, from the snapshot. And um, based on that information, it, it, it pulls all of um, the servers, it, it figures out um, which, um, if any edges are not associated with any delivery service, and then um, it, it also lets Traffic Monitor mark the entire delivery service as healthy or not based on the results of that polling. Um, then in Traffic Router, um, so again, we're only looking at the um, at the edges here. Um, it, uh, it doesn't know anything about the mids in the topology. Um, and so it's going to go through that snapshot and it'll add um, a, um, a server in, the, in each topology to the, the delivery service that it's associated with if and only if um, the server capabilities for that server contain all of the delivery services required capabilities, which is another way of saying that um, the required capabilities must be a subset of that server's um, server capabilities. And then again, uh, Traffic Monitor must mark the delivery services as healthy for Traffic Router to actually use it. Um, yeah, so um, does, does anyone have any questions about Traffic Ops, uh, Traffic Router or uh, Traffic Monitor? Anything that we've discussed so far? Um, uh, if, if not, then um, let's see if uh, Jeremy is uh, ready to share. Um, again, in the slides, uh, I, I've got some links to um, uh, various uh, topology related stuff. So you can check all of that out. Um, th thanks, you guys. And, um, well, uh, and I'm going to throw it over to you, Rob. Uh, let's see. Yes. Hey, Rob, I think you're muted. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I, so uh, I'm Rob Butts. Uh, I'm a principal engineer on the Comcast CDN team. And I've been on traffic control since before it was Apache traffic control. Um, and I've, I've worked on most of the components we have. Um, so I'm going to kind of demo the, these topologies and show you what it looks like, especially in the config gen. So I, I did most of the config gen, um, but it's not really interesting to look at the config generation in the code. Um, and if anyone's interested in that, you know, don't hesitate to look at GitHub, ping me. Um, I don't have any slides, but my email is rob at apache.org, um, or I'll, I'm in our Slack. You know, anybody in our Slack is more than happy to help. So to begin with, uh, this is this is traffic portal. If you're not familiar with it, it's how we config the CDN. Um, and I have a Docker machine here. Just to double check, can everyone see my screen just fine? Uh, yes. Okay. It takes forever to come back and leave. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. OK, um, so I have a Docker machine here. And, and I have a traffic ops and a traffic portal running uh, and a traffic vault react on, on Docker on my, my laptop here. And I've just got a machine here that is just a CentOS machine. And I'm going to be running ORT, which is our config generation. 
uh, tool to generate config for Apache traffic uh, server. And I've actually already run it. And I have a, a standard config here. Um, and we can, we can look at this. So if you're familiar with Apache traffic server, this is a standard config. We've got remaps from A to B for all the delivery services we have. And this is the one we're going to be interested in. It's a simple HTTP MKGA. It's, it's just a simple HTTP delivery service. And you can see this is a standard remap line. And this is without topology. So this is pre-topologies. Everything is using typical uh, delivery service server assignments. Um, so to begin with, we've got this delivery service here. And we're going to change it to topologies. So I've got a topology here. Um, we can look at that. Um, so this is my topology I set up. Um, I just uh, have two mid groups in this little demo set of data, um, and then an edge groups in Florida and New York, and an edge group in California on the west. And the server that we're going to be pretending to be is this server right here, and it's in New York. So we have this delivery service. I'm going to change it to use topologies. So it's now using this main topology. Um, the one other thing you might have to do if you're migrating your system from the old delivery service servers to topologies is if you have an edge header rewrite rule, you can't use that. Same with mid for topologies. And that's because we really can't do an automatic migration here because these are so custom for edges and mids. As you're moving towards topologies that are an arbitrary number of tiers, we now have, you essentially have your first tier, whatever inner servers you might have, and the last tier. And so you'll have to migrate any custom rules you have because these edge rules might apply only to the first. In fact, they probably usually apply only to the first, but maybe they're also on the inner. Um, and in fact, your mid rules will typically be inner and last. And again, you'll have to do some conversion here from, for example, timeouts probably want to go on both inner and last servers in your inner topologies in the middle and your final one. But maybe you have a header rewrite that adds a header the origin needs, and that would only go on the last. So, so that's a conversion you might have to do, um, or you will have to do for any custom rewrite rules you have. But this, this test server didn't have any. So I just converted it to a main, main topology, and I'll save that. And one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to unassign the servers. This is a, this is capabilities. This is essentially a bug we're going to fix soon. But I need to unassign this to make some things in this demo work. Um, actually, I can't unassign them because it's a topology now. Um, again, you wouldn't normally have to do this. I'm just working around something that isn't yet fixed. Um, so I'm going to unassign this server. Specifically, it'll be some capability stuff I do in a minute that that needs to have that unassigned because the UI is going to demand it. So now I change it back to use the topology and update. And now, so now this delivery service is configured to use this topology. And again, refreshing, this is the topology. It's got two mids, um, two edge groups on the east and one on the west. And the server I'm going to be emulating is in New York. And so what we would expect here is the config should not change, right? So our server is in the topology. Um, it's no longer a manual assignment. It's in the topology. The config for Apache Traffic Server should be exactly the same as it, as it always was. Um, you know, real quick, I, most of the work and discussion I want to have is around Apache Traffic Server. But this topologies do also go to the router. So if you're new to Apache Traffic Control, in a nutshell, we have the router and the edges. And when you make configuration changes, you have to send new things to the router. And then you also have to send configuration to the edge. And for example, if you're adding a new thing, it needs to go to the router first. Uh, new, if you're removing something, it I'm sorry, I have that backwards. Uh, you're adding something, it needs to go to the edges first so that their config will be there before you start routing, and vice versa. And so we send things to the router by what we call snapshotting the CDN. We send things to the edge by what we call queuing updates. And those are these buttons here on the CDN. And so I just want to show you real quick what the changes will look like in the snapshot for topologies. Um, let's see. Load. 
localhost. And I don't know what this was. Cable Town. So one of the benefits is a number of reasons we're moving towards topologies. One of the big ones is those delivery service servers don't scale. Um, the, it's an it's an outer join mathematically of delivery services time servers. Uh, in, in our CR config, the, the config that goes to the router, it's well over 99%. Um, for a large CDN, it's going from something like, like half a megabyte to 10, 12 megabytes. Um, and so moving to topologies gets rid of that mathematical outer join and you're, you're no longer growing n times n. Um, so if we search here, um, we can see this is the delivery service I just changed and it now has topology main. Um, and that's all there is to say this service is now in this topology. All of the topology of which server goes to which cache group, which is in that topology, that's all in the cache group. That didn't change from the old value. And there should be a, yeah, here at the bottom of the CR config, there's now, here's the topologies and this is telling you what the nodes are and the order they're in, and that's how that's how the traffic router will figure that out. And of course, traffic router is part of traffic control, so it just takes this config directly, and that's really all there is to it. Um, and again, if you're not familiar with the CDN, this is what it looks like before topologies. Again, this is this is a server, and this is all the delivery services that are assigned to. Again, it's n times n that every single server has this, and it's massive. Um, and so that goes away with topologies. Um, and again, that's pretty much all there is from from this config. It goes to the router, and the router directly parses it. But for the cache, we have to generate Apache Traffic Servers config. And so that's what I'm going to look at now. So again, if you're if you're familiar with Traffic server, um, this is the remap.config. This is what it looks like, mapping A to B. And this is our config that we care about. Now, again, I changed the server to use topologies. And now, if I run the config generation again, this will take a couple minutes. Again, normally, you have to snapshot, which I just did. And then you have to queue. I'm actually running um, in badass mode so that I don't have to queue every time for this demo. Um, and so it's just going to forcibly apply all the config from my server. And it just did that, it took 13 seconds, which if you're familiar with traffic control, that's also way faster than it used to be. Um, and if I grep, again, it shouldn't change. And so we see here, it didn't. This is exactly what it was before. The only difference is now we have a comment that the config generation put in that says topology main. Um, Again, it's a whole lot of code behind the config gen, but as a user, generally this shouldn't change. Your user experience or an operator experience operating Apache traffic control shouldn't change with topologies. Once you assign them in the UI um, and snapshot, everything should essentially just work. So um, I'll show a couple other things here real quick. Let's Let's go ahead and remove this server from the topology so that, again, we want to see that if it's not in the topology, we don't get the configuration. So let's do that. Let's go to um, the topology. And remember, our server was in New York. So I'm just going to remove New York from the topology. Easiest way to do it. Topology was updated. Again, normally, you'd have to queue. I'm not going to do that for the sake of the demo. I'm just going to run the ORT um, tool that places the config on the caches in badass mode. And so again, we remove that topology. What we're expecting to see now is this server, which I'm generating. You can see the host. You can see the host name short here. Um, Odal ATSCC OSCH2G. This is just the name of the server. This server should no longer be in that topology because it's in New York, and the topology no longer has New York. Um, and so if I grep, I can see it's gone. Um, that's not in there. If I just look at part of the remap.config, I can see all these other services that are these old legacy services still using delivery service servers. And on block, HTTP live, live NAT, no cache, HTTP to HTTPS, there's no simple HTTP because um, we removed it from the topology. Um, that's really it for topologies. Again, hopefully, it's a fairly straightforward migration to convert your CDN to topologies. I do want to show one last thing. 
So I'm going to, I'm going to assign this back. Um, so we'll put New York back in the topology and I want to show the capabilities. Um, so the, one of the limitations of topologies, again, because you don't have that direct assignment that doesn't scale, what happens if you say, well, I have this server in this cache group, and it needs to be in the cache group for the router reasons. The way our traffic router works, you, you assign cache groups or how we do the locality. It's, it's, it's if, again, if you're new to traffic control, a cache group is essentially a data center. It doesn't have to be one-to-one. -one. But what if I have this one server in this group or this data center, and I need to not send this one particular delivery service? We've kind of lost that with topologies by not having that n, n times n mapping. Capabilities are, are the way that you can now do that. So again, we've, we've, ass we've assigned uh, New York back to the topology. And I've updated it, so the server is back in the topology. But I want to say, this particular server, I need to not be on this service. It's a one-off case. I've got an edge case. It can't do something that needs to be done. It's a test server, something like that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use capabilities to do that. So servers have capabilities, and they're essentially something the server can do. Again, you can name these anything you want. You can make a capability named foo. Um, that's over here on the server capabilities page. Um, so again, these, you just go to server capabilities and it can be anything you want. Um, and then you say, this is what my server is capable of. So this server actually was able to do these things already. I'm gonna remove these. Um, so now my server is starting from scratch, no capabilities. I'm gonna say this server can, it has a disk cache, that's a capability. Now I go to the delivery service and I go to manage required capabilities. And I'm going to say this delivery service requires, and actually already had one, but I'm going to add it. This delivery service requires Lua. We have an ATS Lua plugin, and we can't, th this delivery service needs it. So any ATS servers that don't have that, I need to not route to, I need to not send config to. And so our server has disk, but it doesn't have Lua. So now with this configured, I would expect this server to not generate config and not be routed to by traffic router um, because it doesn't have Lua. It doesn't have something this delivery service needs. So actually, well, actually, let's remove it because the last thing I did when I generated, the last thing I did when I generated the config was why is it taking me here? Hang on, I'm trying to unlink and it doesn't want to take the button. There we go. I just wasn't clicking on the right place. So the last thing I did when I generated the config was I removed it. Let's add it back. So now it's in the topology. The delivery service has no required capabilities. And so let's generate config again. And we should see it get added back. We're in the topology. We have all the requirements, which are none. And so we'll wait 13 seconds. Um, and we, we grab, and OK, so now we're back. We have our server. Now I'm going to add a required capability here um, that this server does not have, does not have the Lua capability. The server doesn't have the Lua plugin. And I'm going to generate config again. And so again, I should see this server should now be removed. Um, from this delivery service, because even though it's in the topology, it can't do something the server needs. And again, it, this will generally be things that the server can't do, like Lua plugins or disk. But it could be uh, just say, I, I have a test server, so I'll make a capability named test to prevent it from being assigned. And we see that now it's gone. So again, it's in the topology now, but it, hang on. It's in the topology, but it doesn't have a capability that delivery service needs. So that's how you can do one-off cases now. Now that we no longer have direct assignments, as you move to topologies, um, you can say, I, I need to do a one-off and have this one particular thing not assigned. Right now, it's just a capability or not. Um, just to, to note, one of the things that is on our, our list at some point to add is uh, basic Boolean expressions that will make these much simpler. So for example, if you needed to say, um, I want to 
have this delivery service not have any server that has this capability. Maybe I want to not assign servers that have disk cache, so they only get RAM. So I want to say the required capabilities are not disk. Um, that is on our list to do at some point, to have things like not, and, or, um, but it's not there today. And you can technically do it, right? You could make a not disk capability and assign that to all the other servers. So it's technically possible. It's just a little bit messier if you need complicated things today. Um, I think that's really all I had to show. Um, does anybody have any questions about topologies and, and configuration? Yeah, if we have questions, let's ask them in the chat. <clears throat> Rob, I haven't seen any yet. Well, there was one, but uh, Roland answered it already. <clears throat> All right. Um, well, it looks like we've got about 10 minutes. 10 no, minutes left? Five minutes left. Um, I was going to say if Jeremy could get his video up. I talked to him. He said it was, uh, it's too late now. It was sort of like the intro to all of this. What version is that slated for, Hank Ass? This should all be in 5.0. Yeah. yeah. And again, so I've, so when I was working on this, by the way, uh, on the CR config, at some point, I, I've told some people this, at some point I accidentally, uh, in the code, just messing with the code, I accidentally omitted the delivery service servers. And like I said, our, our production configs are like 12 or so megabytes. And if you just if you just remove that delivery service servers key from the entire CR config, that's 12 megs, it's like less than half a, a meg. It's like 500, 400 kilobytes. So we're really hoping this topologies move will will help with scalability. Right, that 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 config is constantly transmitted to the routers, to the monitors. So the this should get rid of that n times n, and and suddenly we we can scale uh, in terms of config. Ten million servers, and your config wouldn't would only grow o of n instead of o of n squared. Very cool, very cool. Um, all processing done in the router off bound, correct? So when you say processing, you well, mean processing that CR config? Yeah, I think that's what near means. Yeah. Um, During the DS times cache. Yeah, the, the DS cache mapping. Yeah, so, so that's all done in in the router, and I believe the monitor has to do it as well, because the monitor has to figure out for health um, what services are on what what, uh, what what servers are on what services. Um, and it's not difficult; it's not computationally expensive, right? You just look at the topology and you do some some calculations and say, okay, these are the cache groups. Here's my servers in the cache group. Check capabilities. It's it's not a, an expensive slow thing. Um, and then also, as a side note, something I kind of glossed over, something else coming in 5.0, um, I don't think is in 4, maybe it's in 4, is the, the cache side config gen. So that is fairly new as well. Um, that This is all happening on the cache side. When the, when the cache config gen, what I was just showing off in the terminal, um, that's all on the cache side. So, so the config gen for the caches used to be in traffic ops. We're trying to break up that monolith and make things more canaryable um, and just not you know, have single points of failure. And so everything I was showing that it was figuring out for that particular cache, um, do I have this server? Am I in this topology capabilities? That's all done on the, on the client side. Um, so again, for large CDNs, you can canary one cache at a time to make sure your config works, um, to make sure a new version of the cache config generator, ORT, um, it's, it's all on the cache now. Um, um, one other feature of uh, flexible topologies that we haven't talked about is that, um, that, does anyone else have an echo? Oh, it sounds like you. Uh, okay. Well, it, 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 in any case, um, you, if it, uh, I can't talk like this. Um, but, but what but but what I was going to say is that previously, um, a cache group could only have uh, 
one parent cash group or one secondary parent cash group. Um, and one thing that you can do with flexible topologies now is you can have as, um, as many parent cash groups um, parenting a cash group as you want. So, um, so uh, yeah, that's just a restriction that's removed there. Yeah, and I'd also note, so even with the new topology stuff, servers are still edge or mid type. Um, there's also some limitations around the the levels of topologies you can do and, and other details like that. Um, we're moving towards getting rid of those. So, so if you hit those limitations, you're trying to set up topologies, um, just bear that in mind and, you know, talk with us, you know, ping us on Slack, ping us on the dev channel and say, hey, I need this or, or what, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, talk with you about that. But we're, we're looking to remove more and more of those limitations. And also, eventually, we'd like to get rid of the edge versus mid classification altogether. And you would just have caches, and they're in the topology in whatever order you, you set them up. And again, for things like custom rewrites, you'll have your first inner and outer um, rewrite that applies to whatever caches, wherever that cache happens to be. And, and maybe a cache is inner on one topology, but it's the edge on another one. Um, so, so as time goes on, we're looking to remove more of those limitations. Cool. All right. Um, I don't see any more questions coming in, um, and we are 30 seconds away from time. So thanks, Rob and Zach. Um, sorry, Jeremy, that, you're, that it didn't work for you. I know you were probably the most prepared out of anyone, uh, which is the ironic part. But anyway, cool. Thanks, guys.